Today's notes are over using the quotient rule to simplify expressions. These notes might look slightly different than what you have on your paper, but all of the content is the same, so just follow along and fill in your notes. Let's get started. It states that when we divide, there we go, when we divide two powers with the same base, we can subtract the exponents. So we're in our exponents unit, and when we divide, we use the quotient rule. So what's a quotient? It's the answer to a division problem. So that's why we call this the quotient rule. So let's look at these first two examples. In this first example, I have two to the third power divided by two to the second power. So my rule states that when I am dividing two powers with the same base, so I have a base of two, same base, I can subtract the exponents. So two to the power of three minus two is two to the power of one, which is just two. So if I write these out in factored form, that would be two times two times two over two times two. And then you may remember this from middle school when you have the same thing on top that you do on bottom, you can cancel those out. Why do we cancel those out? Some people don't really like that term cancel. Anything divided by itself is one. So those don't necessarily go away, but two divided by two is one. So one of the things that you can do is instead of canceling those out, you can write one, right? Two divided by two is one. Well, look, I can also do this. I can cancel them out that way. So one times one times two is two, and then one times one is one. That's two over one. So you can kind of write it out like that. Let's go to this other one where we have variables involved. Same thing, same base, raised to powers, I can subtract my exponents. X to the power of four minus two is X squared. So again, if I write those out in factored form, I get X times X times X times X over X times X. Same thing, anything over itself is one. So those can quote unquote cancel out. I have two X's on top that I'm multiplying together. That's X squared. Now let's move on to the examples. Number one, x to the power of seven over x to the power of three. So we're looking at the same base, so I can use the quotient rule. I can subtract my exponents. Seven minus three is four, so I get x to the power of four. Looking at number two, we have multiple variables involved now, so I need to look at each variable at a time. Let's look at the x's first. x to the power of seven over x to the power of three x to the power of seven minus three, which is x to the power of four. Then let's look at the y's. y to the power of eight over y to the power of two. That's y to the power of six. That's how I can simplify this expression using the quotient rule. On number three, what do you notice? I have the same thing in my numerator that I do in my denominator. Anything divided by itself is one. A lot of students want to say it's zero. It's not. Anything divided by itself is one. Four divided by four. How many times does four go into four? One time. Five divided by five. How many times does five go into five? One time. So m squared divided by m squared, why would it be any different? It's not. If I look at my, or if I apply my quotient rule, I'll get m to the power of two minus two. Let me write that down m to the power of two minus two is m to the power of zero. Anything to the power of zero is one. We can use the quotient rule to prove that anything to the power of zero is one. What's two to the power of zero? That's one. What's three to the power of zero? That's one. Anything to the power of zero is one. Let's move on to number four. So now I've got some numbers involved. I've got some coefficients. So I like to say numbers, then variables, coefficients, then variables. I have to do nine divided by three first. What you do with your numbers is what you've always done with your numbers. What is nine divided by three? It's three. Now I can apply my quotient rule to my variables and their exponents. 
So then I get times x to the power of 5 minus 3. So I'm only looking at my x's first, which is 2. And then y to the power of, what would that be? y to the 6th power divided by y. Well, if I don't have an exponent there, can I put a 1 there? Sure. So y to the power of 6 minus 1 is y to the power of 5. Let's move on to number 5. So I've got a little more going on here. I've got some coefficients, and then I have multiple variables. So let's look at the coefficients first. Negative 15 divided by 5, that's what I have to do first. What is negative 15 divided by 5? It's negative 3. And then let's look at each variable at a time. So let's look at our a's first. 10 minus 7, what is that? 3. b, uh-oh, what do you notice about the b's? b to the power of 4 over b to the power of 4, anything divided by itself is, do you remember? 1. Anything divided by itself is 1. So I just kind of cancel those out. They, it doesn't mean 0. It just means b to the 4th over b to the 4th is 1. And I wouldn't write times 1 right here. Okay, so when I look at the c's now, what do you notice about the c's? Same thing, c divided by c is 1. Okay, so that's my answer, negative 3a cubed. Let's look at number 6. Okay, there's a little more going on here. Numbers than variables. I have to simplify 6 over 14 first. Well, they're both even, so they're divisible by 2. So I can simplify them by dividing 6 and 14 both by 2. And I get 3 over 7, so 3 sevenths. You can also plug it into your calculator if you really struggle with fractions. 6 divided by 14, math, enter, enter, and you get 3 sevenths. So now let's do the next part. x squared over x squared. Anything divided by itself is 1. I'm not going to write 3 sevenths times 1, so I just cross them out. Then y to the power of 9 minus 5. y to the power of 4. Now notice where I wrote that y to the power of 4. You cannot write 3, this is what I don't want to see, 3 over 7 and then y to the power of 4 down here. That's, that's not the same thing. So when you write your fraction like that, you want to kind of write, you can either write these variables and their exponents in your numerator or you can write them just kind of right in the middle of that fraction just like that. So now let's look at the z's. C, z to the power of 13 minus 12 is z to the power of 1. Do I need to write a 1 there? No. Now you can also write it like this. 3 times y to the 4th times z over 7. Both of these are the same thing. In this next section, I'm going to be using a combination of rules that we've already learned to simplify these expressions. So on number seven, I've got this fraction right here times this monomial right here. So if I think about my order of operations, which looks like this, PEMDAS or please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, my order of operations tells me I need to do the parentheses first, then simplify the exponents, then I need to multiply and divide from left to right, whichever comes first, then add and subtract from left to right, whichever comes first. So I'm going to leave that up there so we can just refer to this as we go through these four examples. So the first thing I'm going to do on number seven is I'm going to simplify this fraction. And I need to look at my numbers first. So 12 divided by four, what is that? It's three. And then I can apply my quotient rule to each variable at a time. So looking at the m's, m to the power of 9 divided by m to the power of 7 becomes m squared, n to the power of 5 over n to the power of 1 is n to the power of 4. Then I'm going to multiply that times 4m squared, n to the fourth. So now what rule am I going to use to simplify this? The product rule, because I'm multiplying. I'm multiplying, so let's multiply our numbers. What is three times four? It's 12. And then our product rule states that when we're multiplying variables or exponents that have the same base, I can add my exponents. So m squared times m squared is m to the fourth. 
n to the fourth times n to the fourth is n to the eighth. So you look at your numbers and then each variable at a time. On number eight, what's going on here? We've got this fraction times this monomial right here that's got an exponent outside of the parentheses. Well, that's exponents. I definitely need to simplify that first. And then whatever that is, I'm going to multiply it by whatever this is. So let's simplify both at the same time. The first thing I'm going to do is 64 divided by 16. What is that? It's 4. And then I apply my quotient rule to these variables and their exponents. x to the power of 7 minus 4, which is 3, y to the power of 4 minus 2, which is 2, times, now I'm going to use my power rule to simplify this. You might remember this, 2 to the power of 3, I really like to write that off to the side because a lot of students want to say it's 6. It's not. 2 to the power of 3 is 8. So then I write that down here. Now, the power rule states that I can multiply my exponents. So if you don't have an exponent there, can you put a 1 there? Sure. And then x to the power of 1 times 3, which is 3. And then 1 times 3 again for y, and I get 3 here. And now, I can again apply, apply my product rule. So the first thing I need to do is multiply my coefficients. What is 4 times 8? 32. And then the product rule states that I can add my exponents. So x to the power of 3 plus 3, which is 6, times y to the power of 2 plus 3, which is 5. It starts getting really fun. The more rules you learn, the more fun it gets, in my opinion. So let's look at number 9. There's kind of a lot going on here. We've obviously got some exponents outside of the parentheses. I really we really need to do those first, okay? But what am I raising to the power of 2? Everything inside these parentheses right here. Everything. What I'm going to do first, though, is I'm going to simplify what's in those parentheses. So let's do that. In the parentheses here, 45 divided by negative 9, what is that? That's negative 5. And then let's look at each variable at a time. Times a to the power of 5 minus 3 is 2, times b to the power of 6 minus 2, which is 4, all raised to the power of 2. So I use the quotient rule to simplify all of this first. Then I'm going to raise that to the power of 2. But let's keep going on. So times, well, right here, what would I do in this second monomial here? a squared times 4, what is that? a to the power of 8 plus 6a to the 12th, b to the 8th. Okay, so now I still have this exponent here, and I need to simplify or apply my power rule to this expression right here. So the first thing I need to do is look at this coefficient, negative 5. What is negative 5 squared? Remember, off to the side, I like to write this. What is negative 5 squared? It's positive 25. Be careful about that. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. And now we can apply the power rule and multiply our exponents. So a to the power of 4 times b to the power of 8 times a to the power of 8 plus 6a to the 12th, b to the 8th. We've got a lot going on here. Okay, so when I think about my order of operations, what am I going to do first? Am I going to multiply or am I going to add? I'm going to multiply. So if I don't have a coefficient in front of this variable, I can put a 1 there. You don't have to. 25 times 1 is 25. Then when I'm multiplying, I apply my product rule. a to the 4th times a to the 8th is a to the 12th. b to the 8th, well, I'm not multiplying it, it by anything, but it doesn't go away. It stays a to the 12th, b to the 8th, and what do you know? We have like terms. a to the 12th, b to the 8th, a to the 12th, b to the 8th. When you have like terms, you can combine them. If you don't, you can't. But in this case, we do, so we can. What is 25 plus 6? It's 31. 
And then I like to say last name stays the same, a to the 12th, b to the 8th, and that's my answer. Let's move on to number 10, last one. Lots of stuff going on here. I'm gonna switch colors just cause I want to. So I've got this fraction right here that I can apply my quotient rule times this right here. I'm gonna be applying the power rule and then I'm subtracting. So I need like terms in order for that to happen. And I'm gonna do that last if and only if I can. So let's simplify this first fraction using the quotient rule. So two divided by four, what is that? Well, let's just simplify it, it's one half times x to the power of, notice how I wrote that kind of like in the middle of my fraction. You can write it in your numerator or in the middle of your fraction like that. Do not write it in your denominator, it's not the same thing. x to the power of three times y to the power of, what's that gonna be? Six times over here. What do I do first? Two gets raised to the power of three. What is two to the power of three? It's eight. So times eight, and then I can apply my power rule to these exponents, which tells me that I can multiply them. Times x to the power of two times three, which is six, times y to the power of two times three, which is also six, minus six x to the ninth, y to the twelfth. So now I'm gonna multiply before I subtract because that's what my order of operations tells me to do. So the first thing I need to do is one half times eight. What is that? It's four. Then I apply my product rule, which tells me when I'm multiplying, what can I do with my exponents? I can add them. So let's look at each variable at a time. First, let's look at our x's. x cubed times x to the power of six is x to the power of nine. Then let's look at y's. y to the power of six times y to the power of six is y to the power of 12 minus 6x to the ninth, y to the 12th, and what do you know? Again, we have like terms, which means I can combine them. So let's do that. What is four minus six? It's negative two, and then my variables and their exponents stay the same. And this concludes your notes over simplifying expressions using the quotient rule. I hope it was helpful.